The COVID-19 pandemic has affected Kenya's food systems directly through impacts on food supply and demand and indirectly through decreased capacity to produce and distribute food. In response to that, the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives is addressing food supply chain and nutrition challenges through the establishment of one million kitchen gardens in rural and urban households. Through these one million kitchen gardens, the ministry is contributing to the Big Four agenda on the 100% food and nutrition security by enabling households to maintain a healthy diet. Food safety is also an integral part of food security. The ministry is therefore promoting good agricultural practices that are necessary for the production of safe and healthy fruits and vegetables. In this video, we will look at basic good agricultural practices that should be applied during production and post-production that help in reducing the risk of microbial contamination of food. Agrochemicals are chemical products used in agriculture to protect plants from pests and improve their growth. They include pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, nematicides, and fertilizers. These agrochemicals are toxic to both humans and pests, therefore extra precaution must be taken when purchasing, transporting, handling, storing, and disposing them. Agrochemicals should always be purchased at an accredited source with a PCPB license. When purchasing, always remember to check the expiry date, manufacturing date, and the mixing ratio. How do I put on my protective gear? Which one comes first? So to put on my protective gear, I need to start systematically. So, I start off with the overall. After putting on the overall, then I put on gumboots, then the goggles, I put on the mask. After putting on the mask, I put on the headgear. And finally, my gloves. While wearing my gum boots, I make sure the overall is over the gum boots to avoid chemical dripping into my legs. Same with when I'm wearing my gloves, I make sure that the gloves are worn under the sleeves. Then I am ready to mix my chemicals. Different formulations are done differently. There are those which are in liquid form. If I'm going to mix in liquid form, extra care needs to be taken because it's very easy for spillage on my skin. So what I need to do, I need to put everything ready, the water, the measuring uh, jar that I'm going to use. I, I need to put aside the spillage kit. Under the spillage kit, I need a small bucket, I need soil or sawdust or sand, I need a brush and I need a broom for spillage kit. This should be on standby as I do my mixing. Now in the process of doing the liquid formulation, I take my knapsack and put one third of water into the knapsack. The reason I'm putting water first is because 
I'm avoiding the concentrated chemical getting into the outlet because if I put the chemical first and it gets into the outlet the moment I start spraying I will cause damage to the target of spray so after putting the water I measure the recommended quantity making sure I do not underdose or overdose then I add into the knapsack then agitate the knapsack after agitating the knapsack I triple rinse the measuring jar and empty into the knapsack after triple rinsing and emptying into the knapsack I fill up the remaining part with the water agitate then now I am ready to spray Harvesting at the right time can have a big impact on crop yield and quality. There are different harvesting styles depending on the type of plant. In this video, we will learn how to properly harvest vegetables in a kitchen garden. This is a corn garden. In our corn garden, we have strawberries, curly kales, spinach, and kales, sukumawiki. The normal sukumawiki, this is a thousand heads. We are going to do harvesting of some of the vegetables today. Early morning harvesting is best for most vegetable crops. When harvesting greens for salads or cooking, the best picking time is before 9 a.m. When the sun is too hot, the plants will have wilted and that makes them difficult to prepare. So we are going to have an open basket with the, which is well aerated so that our vegetables remain fresh. And then we are also going to use a sharp knife. We are using a sharp knife because we want to cause minimum damage to the plant. If you use a blunt knife or use the hand, you'll cause a lot of damage to the plant and it will take a lot of time and nutrients to heal. It may also be a source of contamination for, bacterial, for diseases like bacterial wilt and the whole plant may die. So, Hold your knife. We are going to harvest the curly kales. The curly kales can be harvested once they have from six to eight leaves. So we are going to harvest. Make sure you cut all the outer leaves. As you harvest, you put in your aerated basket. It could be woven or plastic like this one of mine. Continue harvesting. As you harvest, you leave the stalks two inches from the plant to prevent diseases and uh, injuring the plant so that the plant doesn't waste nutrients healing the wound. Eventually, these left stalks will dry off and just fa fall naturally and the plant will continue growing. We have left at least four leaves. You leave at least four leaves. This, these four big leaves are what we are likely to harvest next time. So don't cut all the leaves and leave the small ones only. Remember, the plant manufactures its food through the leaves, so you must leave enough foods, enough leaves for the plant to manufacture its food. Continue like that until you do the whole garden so that next time you come, you can harvest again. Alternatively, you could do a few plants next time a few plants and continue with that kind of sequence next time you're harvesting again so that is our harvested plant i've left at least four big leaves so that the plant continues maturing food ma manufacturing food if you continue harvesting like that you're also giving enough space for the new leaves to grow harvest often some vegetables mature very fast, therefore it is a good idea to stay on top of harvesting. Frequent harvesting can result in higher quality and better tasting vegetables. It can also encourage a large yield and reduce wastage 
due to over mature produce. So our, our spinach now is well harvested and we continue with that process. The remaining leaves can be harvested like after two weeks or even one week. Just make sure you, you leave at least three to four leaves that you can harvest next time. So we are actually taking all uh, Kenyans who would be then interested to set up their, their own kitchen gardens or home-based gardens within the confines of their homes. We would then be able to you know, provide, be it technical support, be it uh, technical and also uh, uh, um, you know, input support to the families that may not afford uh, to, to buy for themselves. From this tutorial, it is our hope that you will apply good agricultural practices and enjoy a constant supply of safe and nutritious vegetables, fruits and spices for you and your family. In case you need more information, kindly log on to www.kilimo.go.ke.